So, Shoja, can you walk us through some of these successful multi-cloud deployments and considerations? So, uh, there are a lot of strategies that comes into my mind, but as of now, I would like to discuss a few of it. Uh, first of all, workload distribution. Um, we need to understand when it comes to multi-cloud approach, you, you as, as an architect, you should never feel hesitant uh, in, into obtaining another cloud platform that provides a better performance, a better cost. Uh, no matter what the reason would be for opting that cloud provider, you should always be embracing uh, utilizing that. Uh, for example, if if uh, if we have an application or we design an application that is a very compute heavy application, and uh, we are operating on cloud A, and we, there is a cloud B available out there that provides much better performance uh, instances for compute based resources. So I should always embrace that and make sure my application is running and uh, an interoperability operating with, with that cloud provider with current existing platform that we have. So the, the, these would be my workload distribution and, and we should also consider the geographic location of my user base as well. Uh, and that is one of the key areas where we need to decide which cloud provider we should opt for and how we should evenly distribute our implementation as well. If we do have customer uh, uh, location, uh, maybe located into multiple geographic locations, then we should spread over all uh, workload based on multiple uh, multiple regions. And then there are some cloud providers which don't have, you know, the geographic location or geographic presence in uh, a lot of locations where your user base is. You need to always opt for other cloud providers for in such scenarios. Other than that, uh, I would also uh, discuss uh, automated uh, deployment strategies around this. Um, and uh, as, as always, uh, as, a, as an infrastructure developer, you should always opt for automated solutions available out there, uh, famously known as Terraform and also uh, Ansible. These solutions are always, all, always there to protect your systems and uh, these are um, systematically generated code and, uh, and not, uh, you know, uh, manually operated mainly. And it is always a version controlled uh, implementation where obviously you, you can always review and vet your implementation before rolling out to production. And this will, uh, this, the, these kind of solution all, are always human error prone and, and this will always make sure that your implementation are being reviewed, being tested and being, uh, you know, produced after a rigorous uh, uh, testing around it. Sounds good, Sedra. Would you like to add something? Um, the, I think whenever I talk about uh, developing multi-cloud based application, one thing that comes to my mind, the key principle is, is decoupled, loosely coupled. So that is what we do with the communication, uh, when we're setting up communication and such applications, that is what we do for the set application architecture itself. That is why the microservices architecture comes in, you know, because they give an increased scalability and of course lesser amount of dependability on mm -hmm. other services that they run with. Uh, this is where containerization also comes in, you know, because uh, if you are leveraging uh, containerization technologies like Docker and Kubernetes to package application and their dependencies, it ensures consistent execution across different clouds and a uniform execution mm -hmm. throughout. So that definitely helps with keeping uh, things at bay and under control. Um, and lastly, I would say it, it, it has to be a totally API driven design. It has to be um, something uh, where the resources can interact seamlessly uh, regardless of the underlying platform.